All right. Hey, it's good to have you here today, Jake. It's good to be here, Tim. How's your summer going? I'm just just cruising here, a little blues traveler. Blues traveler is always good this time of year. Keeps the day. It's kind of a summer summer tune there. Sit back with some well, iced tea in this I, heat. Sure. Sit, great. Iced tea is good there. We would uh, like to welcome everyone to CMS Instructional Technology Season 1, Episode 19. The date is July 26, 2001. Every week... Myself, Tim Smith, and Jake here like to share instructional ideas, tools, news, possibilities that we think will work within Charlotte-Mecklenburg schools. Yeah. We want to create an instructional technology community where we all come together, share idea ideas, and talk about how to integrate technology into the classroom and beyond, yeah. and just see what can be done. So uh, where are we headed today with that in mind? Today we are going to look at Digo. Ah, Digo. You know, didn't we already talk a little about social networking? Right. Social we did talk about social bookmarking. Social bookmarking. Back the on category in all the different tools okay. out there. Okay. But today we want to do a dive into what is okay. so great about uh, this one. This one tool. social bookmarking tool, this that, one tool that you and I actually use, we use daily. Quite a, well, every day. So if we want to know more about social bookmarking, we can go back to episode ten. Yes. You can find it. It's IT Weekly number one hundred and ten, but it's episode ten on May seventeenth. So we talk about what social bookmarking is. Today we're going to dive, we're going to do kind of a medium dive. Yeah. It's not really a deep dive. No, a medium no. dive into uh, Digo. So that's our focus. You know, I see Digo as kind of the organizational piece to everyone's professional learning network, their PLN. Right. you got to have that organization piece. We've got a lot of collaboration out there. Everybody's using different collaborating tools. Well, well take Twitter, for example. Twitter's a you big one. You can find some great resources on Twitter. Got to find a place to put them. They're going to get buried a few days from now, and yeah. Twitter's only archiving a few weeks back now. Depending, so yeah. This yeah. stuff disappears. These are top of the 21st century learning skills. you got to be able to share and organize. And I believe, as well as you, yeah. that Digo is a great place for us to be able to share and organize. So yeah. let's get into it. Very good. So um, why do we like to use Digo. Why do you start. like to use Digo? Well, I like to use Digo because it's a place where I can store bookmarks That's and access my bookmarks from any computer that has an internet connection. Even any smartphone with an internet connection. Yes. I can find my bookmarks, my resources, right when I need them. That's one aspect of yeah. bookmarking. And, it, and, it's, great. and it's a good one. Everybody, everybody kind of sits there and that's alright. Mm -hmm. Because I've got a ton of bookmarks. Sometimes I'm at my, my uh, parents-in-law's house in another state yeah. and I don't have my computer with me, I only have my iPad and, and I want those bookmarks. Well luckily there's an iPad app, there's an iPhone app, there's an Android app, but they're also all on the web because I've been using Digo to, to organize my links for the past couple of years. Yes, and, and then the additional organizational components of that is that you can tag and Great groups. There's huge. Why don't we go to so so you just started down this road. It is much more than bookmarks. Yes. Well, and the, we're just thinking of like bookmarks for ourselves. Correct. But then there's the social aspect of it that is huge. The group component gets into where Tim and I can share several different categories of bookmarks with each other, groups of bookmarks with each other, and one of our goals for this this podcast and the future afterwards is to create an instructional technology group in Digo where you can come and see some resources that we are Well, actually, we are it's already created. Yes, it and is And we can go right now to Digo and you can look up, look up CMS Instructional Technology and you will see that there are um, links there and we've been trying to put all of our IT Weekly links into it, but that's not the only thing we want to drop into it, but it's an opportunity for CMS Instructional Technology to be able to share some of the links that we see work across Charlotte-Mecklenburg schools. Now, the only, the only downside here, Jake, is uh, as we all experienced even just this past weekend, the internet is, uh, we like the word organic, it's, yes. it's constantly fluid, it's changing, so something that works today in CMS sometimes doesn't work tomorrow. Or, or it's not even CMS's <laughs> yeah. fault. Yeah, I mean, uh, we... Uh, well, websites you, change their policies. And, they uh, change owners, people they buy them. They may not be free anymore. This happens all the time. So. So yes, the, the group. So this is just one group. Uh, we've joined many other groups individually and, and whatnot. One of the, I've joined a couple of iPad groups. Now when I say join a group, I don't even necessarily contribute to these groups. I, I get a daily digest. So the entire Digo community is sharing into these groups. And then every morning in my inbox, 
uh, I get a, a list of all the sites that were added and it just gives me a quick glimpse, a digest, of what's going on in that group. And what's nice about the that digest that you're reading, or even if you log into Digo, you won't see just the link and the description of the website. You can actually see a description by the person that made that that uh, bookmark. You can write in a whole paragraph of your thoughts about what's great about this website, or how it might be used in the classroom. So yeah. you can see all those comments, and there can even be a discussion happening about that website within your Digo Within group. Digo. So, so you get other educators ideas and thoughts on a website and you know we happen to live in a web tools world and so it's great to hear what other teachers are thinking. Exactly. Now we've been talking a lot about education so I think it would be key to point out yes. that uh, Digo is great for bookmarks, it's great for for sharing ideas about uh, different web tools and web bookmarks but that there is an education side to this. Yes, there is. The teacher console, as it is uh, described, you can create classrooms and have your students get in. So, wait, so you're saying, just right off the bat, what I'm hearing quickly here is, I can make a classroom and put links in there and all my students can see the links that I'm sharing to that classroom. Exactly. Wow. And your students can also access them. They can log in without an email account. You create their accounts, they can log in, and they can comment on those posts. Wow. And they can be the only ones that see it, too. You nice. can prevent the public, the world, from seeing all of these things that are happening within your Digo group for your classroom. Now, do I get this uh, educator account right away? I sign up to Digo, I'm good to go? No. no, Tim, you have to sign in as your C with your CMS email to okay. prove you are a, an employee. An educator. Of K-12, okay. and then they will approve you. But the approval process is pretty quick. It's pretty quick. So I need to look for education accounts. And you know, this is this is key throughout most web tools. We've talked about this over the past couple months as we've talked to teachers and principals across our district, is that every one of these websites, majority of them, have an educational component to them. Yes. Uh, Jake likes to explain it as, they, you know, they get a write-off for this, so it, it helps fund their overall goal. So any web tool you go to, you should look for an educational uh, login or something like that. Sometimes you get more. We get kind of a premium account here in, yes, in do. Digo. Uh, you, I believe Prezi also, you get a higher account yes. if you sign in as an educator. So always look for that educator aspect. You're getting a perk that Others Joe don't. Public would have to pay for. So it's, Correct. it's worth it. Yeah, so education accounts important. Yeah. You know, what makes Digo so valuable though is the, the quick access right inside your tool. Yes. So um, if we, we actually did this in the instructional technology Digo feed here, um, we created a couple of bookmarks going to our CMS instructional technology. Shameless promotion here of yes. our conference, of course. Seven days to go. But we went into the uh, approved presentations section and we've installed a Digo uh, web highlighter application in our web browser. And this will vary according to the browser that you're using, but in our web browser, if we click on that Digo application, it will show what we highlighted right there in the web. So you highlighted the internet. I highlighted text awesome. within the internet. Great. And then I added a comment to that highlight, and if I click over Roll where that way. number is, it will show the comment that I made. And it even shows that you replied to my I did comment. Reply. So you so, can, right there in the web, you can carry on a conversation about specifically what you just highlighted. Very cool. And this can be done with students. It can be done with other teachers. This is becomes a valuable tool. Uh, oftentimes, Jake will highlight an entire blog post or a news article, something to deal with what we're talking about, and it shows up in my feed. And, uh, you know, I have no problems not reading that article because Jake kind of synthesized it. Mm -hmm. Because the next goal isn't for me to waste my time reading it. I trust Jake's opinion. Now we have to start thinking about how to apply it. So he exactly. kind of did some of the research for me, uh, and then together we, we go on. Mm -hmm. so. Now imagine this in the classroom, students being able to highlight and annotate right within a web page. could be a, a, go to uh, Google Books or Project Gutenberg read old text and they can highlight and annotate and put in their comments about things and you can have a discussion right yeah. there on the website. It's huge. I really think it is valuable to be able to annotate the web. Yes. Uh, you know, it's one of the 
coolest things about EPUBs and, and the books that we have on our devices. But to be able to annotate the internet with Digo is key. So, yes, it is. you know, Digo, much more than bookmarks. Definitely. And just another powerful web tool to consider in your, your arsenal, your core uh, tools out there, too. We want really you. Uh, we want you to join uh, the instructional technology Digo group. If yeah. you're if you're not sure, you, there's we'll have some links for it. But you can go to Digo, and we'll we'll have links on the wiki. We want you to join that group so that you can see some of the resources that we're sharing. And if nothing else, just see what's there. Contribute when you feel comfortable doing so. But uh, at least enjoy what we have. Yeah. And with that.